Hi, my name is Bob Murdoch. Today I want to show you how to take apart one of our anti-freezing valves that you'll see often buried below the frost line. This is typically for a bi-level drinking fountain. And this bi-level drinking fountain would have two control valves. And you'll have what you see here as a stop. An air control valve has two things, what I call negative pressure and positive pressure. The positive pressure, these two lines, would correspond to the buttons up on top of the drinking fountain, maybe at the end of the ADA arm or on the pedestal. And when you push a button, what you need to hear is, you'll hear that little click. And that simply means is that little puff of air broke the magnetic seal. And when that magnetic seal breaks, the water then can flow to the bubbler. When you release the push button, the water that did not exit the bubbler will drain back down below the frost line out through these valves and into the ground. Again, leaving a situation where you have a year-round drinking fountain. Now, to service this air troll valve, we made everything very simple so that you have a knurled knob here and a simple quick release so that you can take things apart without hurting anything. Phillips screwdriver and you go corner to corner. And this servo motor will pop right off. Now, the diaphragm that you have here is the only working part inside this valve body itself. So I recommend that you always replace this because you're going to get some funk and corrosion on here. If it's hard water, maybe have a high lime content, maybe iron, you need to replace this. These rubber pieces I just recommend replacing at least once a year if you're in an area where the water is, a, is not clean and pure like it should be. To take the rest of this apart, again, what I always do since there's lock washers here is flip it over and make sure it stays right in front of me. Those four screws that you see here hold this top on. And then you pop the top off and there's the diaphragm. Now the diaphragm is a pretty innocuous little piece and often doesn't go bad. On the bottom side that you see here is another metal piece. And when you hear that little click click, this means the diaphragm is opening, allowing the water pressure to open the valve. Okay? Now, this diaphragm will go bad once in a while. You may get a hole in it. And the spring that's underneath here supports this above so that it moves up and down as you hear that little puff of air. The magnet goes open, the magnet goes closed. This is one piece, and we recommend that you replace it. Now, you can't see it on camera, but there's a very, very small hole in here that allows that air movement to go back and forth. This should not get wet. It's fine that this gets wet, but you don't want this portion of the body to get wet because when that gets wet, if there's water in here, and you can see where the return air line comes into here, this return air line will also suck in water. So when it sucks in water, guess what happens? Nothing moves. It goes closed, and you won't have that nice little click, click. The large spring that you see in here fits inside the magnet, just like this. Okay, And it'll fall to the side, so the trick on this one is when you're putting it back together, make sure you get the spring around the top of that little nub, and then you're good to go in place. There's also another little spring here that you see, and the trick on this one is, it almost looks like a spring that you find in a ballpoint pen, is to make sure that this sharp edge is where the spring goes. It doesn't go on the flat edge or the round sharp portion of it. It goes on the cone-shaped portion of it, so that when you put it back together, it'll drop in place, and you're good to go, just like this. So what you've done is replace the operating diaphragm here, the diaphragm here, put your new diaphragm in place, make sure it's seated properly. Put your cap back on. Make sure this is all still flush, that there's not any sharp edges anywhere. Drop it back down in place and take your screws and reassemble. The trick is before you put it back down on the ground, make sure you hear that little click, click. If you don't hear that click, click, it means you put it back together incorrectly. So make sure you hear it on both valves. Put your reassembly back together. And again, the only thing you really have to watch out for, and I've lost many of these things, these little spring clips, just be careful when you put them back down. Make sure they get seated properly because guess what, if not, it's gonna wind up in the hole. And if you don't have a spare one of these things, you're gonna have to go fishing and that's gonna ruin your day. Most importantly, before you put it back down in the ground and lift back down and push it in there, make sure you remember to turn the water back on to it. So this is a memory point for you. Turn the water back on, all the way on. Now your stop strainer's all the way open. And once a year, 
I'd probably take this thing off of here and clean that screen out to make sure you're okay and ready to go for next season. And that truly is about it. Make sure when you have, everything's working properly, it's back down, and you simply put it back down to the ground. Be very careful with all the tubing that gets down in there. You might want to coil around, take your time putting it down. And the rod that we have will help push it all the way back down below the frost line. This doesn't need to be above grade or above the frost line because that's the goal here is to make sure all the water runs out of these valves and out below the grade. So once again, very simple. Let us know how we can help you. My name is Bob Murdoch. You can reach us at MurdochMFG.com. That's www.MurdochMFG.com. Look us up on the internet. We'll be happy to help you in any way we can. Thanks again for your time. Let us know how we can help.